Okay. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kyle here. Um, you see the hat. Obey. Obey. Anyway, I'm just playing. Um, doing a SmackDown review tonight. Um, uh, before I get into SmackDown review, uh, I want to mention two things. One, uh, I recommend you guys for the holiday season. Uh, buy, if you enjoy eggnog, I recommend you get Obi Weiss eggnog. This stuff is good. I've been drinking Obi Weiss eggnog every year around the holiday season. Um, for the last five or six years now. Really good eggnog. Good stuff here. And plus it doesn't have any alcohol, so it's even better. Um, so if you enjoy eggnog, and you want something with a good, richy, creamy taste, get Overwise eggnog at your local grocery store. Um, other thing I also want to mention too, um, I got some DVDs today. Uh, one is the uh, 2011 Night of Champions pay per DVD. And I also got the greatest rivalry, Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart, um, three to set. I've heard nothing but good things about this DVD set. Um, so I'm very interested in watching this. Um, I'll do a review, a DVD review on it, um, on tomorrow. I'll do a review on this. And, um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. And I cannot wait for them to release the, uh, greatest rivalries, Austin versus Rock DVD, which is set for next year. But, you know, like, um, until tonight, uh, from SmackDown, the show opens up with Randy Orton, um, talking about, um, his team and for Survivor Series, um, with him and, um, Wade Barrett, um, which I kind of don't see what's the point, it's like, um, I think, uh, the Mad Science of 7890 had also mentioned the same thing, too, about how, like, it would have made more sense if it was Team Orton versus Team Rhodes. Like, Wade Barrett has done nothing, um, or has anything, well, there's nothing between Orton and Wade Barrett for them to go head-to-head -head as a as a team um, at, at Survivor Series. Um, so I really don't think that really makes sense. Secondly, um, that, you know, for this to be Survivor Series, I know, obviously, you know, they're building this whole thing off for... Um, Rock and Cena, and then the Punk and Alberto the real thing, those are the two main matches that are, you know, sold for Survivor Series, but I mean, still, it's like, this year, they really didn't put much thought into the actual Survivor Series uh, type of match, but they just took 10 random guys, and they just threw them together, and you found out tonight who those 10 guys were, um, so I really didn't really care for that, because, you know, the Survivor Series matches are one of the things that makes the, the pay-per-view interesting, but um, anyway, uh, so Randy Orton comes out talking about a whole bunch of stuff, which he shouldn't talk at all. Uh, Randy should just be one of those, uh, one-word type of guys. Then Wade Barrett comes out, talks some trash, followed by Christian. Breaks up to the fight. Sheamus comes out, breaks up the fight. Um, then we get on to the first match, which is Sheamus versus Christian. Uh, this is another decent match. This is another good match. But, boy, I tell you, um, <clears throat> you know, Sheamus is doing a good job as a babyface. And, you know, a lot of people get behind him and stuff, and um, I'm still behind him as well. Been behind him since, uh, before, he, before he became a face, I've been behind him, but still. Um, it seems like both him and Christian right now are kind of stuck in limbo, if you know what I mean. It's like, you know, you've got Orton doing his thing with Rhodes and possibly maybe not doing something else with Lee Barrett. Um, Mark Henry has this thing with Big Show, and it's like, they don't know what to do with Christian and Sheamus other than to constantly have these two fight each other. I mean, like, really. For every Christian Orton match we've seen, we've probably seen about just as, just as many Sheamus Christian matches. Seriously. Um, now, I'm not complaining. There weren't crack bands that were good matches, but I mean, still, like, how many times are you going to plug in a Sheamus Christian match? And I really think they're doing this because they really don't have anything that they don't know what they want to do with both these guys right now. They're kind of stuck in limbo. Um, but anyway, um, Sheamus ends up getting the victory on Christian. Again, poor Christian. Um, but there was this one, um, this one part of the match where, um, Sheamus got knocked into the, the steel post. And, you know, you've seen a, you've seen it once, you've seen it a thousand times where wrestlers, you know, get hurt off, you know, from falling off a, um, a, getting ran into a steel post. But tonight, when Christian ran Sheamus into the steel post, you actually heard the post make, like, a bong-like sound. Like, when Sheamus hit it, you heard it, it went bong. I mean, you, you could hear that hollow sound 
of the steel um of the steel pipe and I never heard that before you know out of so many like I said for so many years of all these wrestlers getting ranched into the thing you never really hear it make a any type of sound, but you actually heard it make a bong, hollow sound when Seamus ran into it, so that kind of made me think maybe, you know, Seamus might be kind of hurt. It looked like it was pretty painful. It definitely sounds like it, but um, just kind of wanted to mention that. Um, after that, the next match we got was... I know I'm probably missing another match in between here somewhere, but um, cause I'm still going off memory. But uh, the next match we get into was uh, Mark Henry versus uh, Brian Kendrick. Again, a rematch from uh, last week. Uh, Brian Kendrick, um, not Brian Kendrick, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. I'm tired. Daniel Bryan, uh, a rematch from Daniel Bryan and Mark Henry from last week. They have a fight again tonight. Um, this was, uh, once again, like I said, this is okay. Um, Daniel Bryan getting the hell beat out of him by Mark Henry. Now, uh, Mark Henry won, and after the match, Mark Henry started to uh, beat up on Bryan again, Daniel Bryan again, and about to, you know, break his leg with the chair in between. But Big Show comes out, makes the save. Mark Henry runs away. I don't like that. But anyway, yeah. Um, and then after that, we got into a, had a Divas match. Um, I didn't attention to that. Um, it was Alicia Alicia Fox versus uh, um, Jimmy Flash Nichols' daughter. I keep forgetting her name. But then again, how am I supposed to remember if they don't keep her relevant on television? Um, then after that, you get the tag team match with the Usos going up against um, Hanico and Epico, and Primo was um, ranked side to the system. Now, um, you guys already know explained it to you before that both uh, Hanico and Epico are really no strangers to each other because they were tag team champions in SCW, I think like two or three times at least, and Epico is, uh, I think, like the second or third cousin to Primo and uh, Carlita. So, um, but anyway, they come out in their street clothes. Um, they fought the Usos. This was, oh, this was okay. Um, nothing against the Usos, you know. For WWE to want to so-called rebrand the tag team division, like, they have the Usos. Like, why aren't they using Usos? I mean, I like the Usos a lot. They have a good look to them. Um, I think they're not, they're good in the ring. I mean, of course, there's always room for improvement, but I don't think they're bad. They're good in the ring. Uh, I do think, you know, with their, I love their interest. Their interest is very creative and very, uh, you know, how should I say, um, very truthful to their culture. So I like the Usos a lot, and I'm saying to myself, okay, you're talking about you want to rebrand the tag team division, you're just putting random people together. Why aren't you using the Usos? I mean, these guys were here way before you even thought up in your minds to put Coffee and Bourne together as a tag team. You already have a tag team that's here. Use them. But anyway, uh, they lost. Uh, the Usos lost to uh, Honeyco and uh, Epico. Um... Yeah, and afterwards, uh, Epico, Hanico, and Primo, what's up with all these O's? Um, they end up jumping on, uh, you know, the brothers, the Uso brothers. And there's, there's one, there was this one cool scene where um, Epico did a uh, front uh, face breaker, and then Primo did the back breaker, and then Hanico, Hanico uh, did the uh, the moonsault um, from the from the top from the top rope. So they did all three of their moves on one guy, on Jey Uso, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, so that ends there. Um, but I do wonder one thing, though. Um, just a thought or a suggestion. Um, is WWE is putting, you know, like I said, Hanico and Epico, they were tag teams in, in SCW, and now it seems like obviously now they're them as a tag team here. And now they brought in Primo. Um, and just seeing how the way they dress, they really didn't dress in rain gear, but just, you know, thugged out street clothes. Um, just a thought here. Is WWE trying to create their own version of uh, Mexican America? Like they did when they tried to make their own version of the beautiful people by making Lay Cool? Just saying. Just throwing it out there. You guys be the judges of it. I have my advance about it, but I'll just let you guys be the judges. Be the judges of it. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, then after that begins the main event, Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett. 
Um, this was this wasn't a bad match. I think it could have been a little bit better, but you know it, it wasn't bad for what it was. Uh, Barrett and Randy Orton going at it for at least about twenty minutes at least. Um, so yeah, uh, oh, Randy Orton's about to do the RKO. Wade Barrett um, pushes Randy pretty much into the referee, and Randy kind of stops himself from falling over on the referee. When Randy turns around. Way Barrett just socks him in the face and gets a roll up and actually lands over on Randy Orton. So, um, Way Barrett got the victory over on Randy Orton. Um, oh, and the other match back here. The other match I knew I forgot was, um, it was Jinder Mahal versus Ted DiBiase. Nothing special there. Ted DiBiase got the victory. Um, it looks like WWE are kind of. Getting behind, they might start getting behind Tate DiBiase again. It looked like they're going to try to slowly build him up, um, up the ladder again. So um, that was the other match that I forgot to mention. But um, on the main event, Wade Barrett got got a victory over on uh, Randy Orton, and I can't really say it was a cheap victory because he really didn't do anything cheap or cheap, you know, or, or you know, like I say cheap or dirty to win, you know. Orton was about to use RKO. He reversed it. Orton almost knocked into the referee. He just took advantage by punching him in the face and did a roll up. So, if you really think about it, he really didn't cheat to win or anything else. He kind of got over Randy Orton pretty clean. Um, not even kind. He really did get. He get. He got over on Randy Orton clean. That, that's how I see it. The more I think about it, he got over on Randy clean. But uh, that's it for SmackDown. Um, SmackDown was okay tonight. Wasn't great. Wasn't terrible, just okay. Um, I don't know for some reason tonight SmackDown just seemed a little bit uh, rushed to me for some reason. I don't know. Um, maybe you know they're trying to for the Survivor Series team or something, but I don't know. Um, SmackDown just seemed really rushed tonight for some reason. Um, it just felt like that to me. But let me know what you guys thought um, of tonight's SmackDown. If you like it, didn't like it, comment, subscribe. Um, like the vid, and also, like I said, um, I'll be doing a review of this DVD um, tomorrow. I'll watch it tomorrow morning and do a review of it later later that night. Um, on tomorrow, so look forward to that. And once again, I recommend you get Obi Weiss um, eggnog. It's some good stuff. Peace out, guys, and have a good night.